Hello, welcome to Gears by Aposteriori. We are really, really excited and very proud to present this new robotics education tool. Um, my co-founder and partner, Court Wee, was so busy during lockdowns um, uh, of the COVID-19 epidemic uh, and t managed in a month or so to create the basis for a brand new platform for uh, robotics, virtual robotics and coding education. And um, this is an expansive platform. It's all open source. We are hoping that uh, you can use this uh, in your classrooms and in your work or in your educational journey to learn a little bit about robotics and a lot about coding and how to uh, how how coding works in, in a robotics from a robotics point of view. So um, I wanted to use this time to present to you with uh, a lot of the different features of our platform and just to give you a basic orientation. Uh, from there, we will start a set of tutorials to teach you how to go through uh, a bunch of the worlds that we've created already uh, for people to use. But by no means is any of this uh, restrictive uh, to, uh, from the environment's perspective because you can design your own robots and your own worlds uh, using our platform. Well, let's get started. Um, when you first bring up Gears, gears.aposteriori.com.sg, uh, you will see this particular uh, What's New panel. This panel will contain information about uh, what's new in our platform since the last time you uh, brought it up with you know, uh, cookies uh, or cache in your environment. So when you move to another computer or to another browser or if you, you know, delete your cache, cookies obviously we won't know if you had used it before so you'll see this panel again you know it'll have some information about uh, new major features that we've added to the system okay let's uh, let's go down click OK uh, and once you are out of the what's new panel or the next time you come into um, gears world you will see this area which is our blocks coding um, panel it has a bunch of tabs with a bunch of coding blocks. If you're familiar with block programming, you will have seen something uh, similar to this in the past. Um, this is based off of Blockly, and so uh, if you've seen anything else based off of Blockly, you would have seen this sort of structure of blocks. If you're more familiar with Scratch uh, or another type of platform, maybe you've seen a slightly different style of the same uh, uh, basic configuration where you have tabs the tabs have uh, some category uh, once you open them you have blocks the blocks can be dragged out uh, connected to one another and you can change aspects of the blocks inside of them we also have a Python panel uh, the code of the Python panel gets automatically generated uh, it uses as you can see EB3 dev uh, the bb 3 dev library um, bindings so you you know we already have a lot of um, uh, our robots um, uh, ability to sense and to move uh, already uh, set up using that and any new things we create or you create uh, we need to bind to a, a, an extension of this library uh, and I'll talk to you about some of those like our laser sensor etc if you ch make changes inside uh, the blocks, for instance, if we add a move tank uh, with speed 20% on both sides, we will see a tank drive uh, line, uh, you know, a parallel line in the Python code. However, if I start typing uh, in my Python uh, panel, we'll get a warning that the Python code is not being converted. This is a limitation of our system at this time. So uh, if you ever want to go back to blocks, you will need to lose all of the code that you've done in Python. But if you're happy with a Python-only environment, uh, feel free to code directly in Python. Uh, I'll be showing mostly in tutorials uh, using block programming, but um, by no means uh, should you be limited to using block programming on your end. The simulator. Um, is the environment where we have our robot um, 
uh, and uh, how we you know test our code and how we make our code come to life so uh, there's a lot going on here um, I'll get back to it in a second uh, there are ways for you to save your blocks or save your Python code locally on your computer and then load them back in um, there's a few other things you can do like importing functions and zipping packages of you know the world and the robot together uh, and if you want to start from scratch, you can click on new program. And once you go back to your Python or blocks, you'll see that we no longer have that uh, motion black that we added before. Um, for Python, we have a few uh, uh, modes. You can use the EV3 dev mode. Um, there is a PyBricks mode that um, makes the Python code bind to it, but it doesn't currently work uh, with uh, live simulation. So for now, I recommend keeping it on EV3 dev mode. We also have this robot uh, menu. Um, in it, we can select different robots. So we have robots um, that are you know, configured for particular functions. Uh, this is a single sensor line follower with a one uh, color sensor pointing down. But we also have a double sensor line follower where it, there would be two color sensors. Um, there are also different robots for different scenarios. Uh, we have some paintball based scenarios. Um, we have uh, a maze scenario where you know maybe uh, ultrasonic sensors on three sides make it a, uh, a lot better. Um, there are uh, tow trucks with different actuators and crane with a different type of actuator. Uh, and um, you can also uh, design your own robot. Um, under robot robot configurator uh, you can use the robot configurator to change um, you know the robots body height uh, its width um, its length and uh, wheel diameters wheel width uh, you know you could you could uh, you could configure the base robot based on these things um, you can add different sensors and different actuators uh, that we've already designed um, so uh, yeah, you, you know, you can play around with this. Um, there are a bunch of um, ideas uh, that we're still experimenting with and we'd love to hear your uh, ideas as well. Okay, uh, once, you've, you know, once you've created your robot, you can save it and then you can load one from the file and you will be able to load it as your main robot um, in, 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 in the normal uh, Gears world. So I'll go back now to my safe zone here and uh, it's, you know, experimenting with robot configuration is uh, not what I'm going to cover today. But um, another thing I wanted to show you is once you've selected your robot, um, you know, the description will allow you to see the EV3 bindings for the different actuators and sensors. So um, yeah, importantly, we have ports A, B, C, D, you know, the letter ports for our actuators. In this case, A and B are the left and right wheel, and C is an electromagnet on the bottom of this robot. I'll show you now once we get back to the simulator. And we have four sensors, the one color sensor that I mentioned already, but also an ultrasonic sensor on top, as well as a gyro sensor and a GPS. Um, not all of these have direct bindings to um, like, you know, the basic EV3 uh, LEGO kit, but you know these are based in, all of our sensors and actuators are based on some um, uh, uh, vision of a realistic kind of uh, 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 component. Okay, um, let's see what we have. Uh, anything else? The arena, uh, again, it's a pretty new feature for us. Uh, if I go to the arena, it will allow me to load multiple robots in there. Uh, so once you've uh, created um, your robot and robot code for that robot, you can package those up and go to the arena and maybe um, play with multiple robots at the same time. I'm not going to cover that today, but I think it's one of the coolest features that we've added recently and kind of separates us apart from many other simulators at this time. Um, back to the simulator. Uh, so we have the robot that we've selected. Um, now we can also select different worlds. So since we're uh, doing line following, I might want to choose the line following world, but we have a lot of other uh, different types of worlds. 
uh, worlds for uh, practicing how to do, uh, uh, you know, uh, to use the gyro to go f uh, in a straight line. Um, we have worlds for uh, testing uh, paintball launcher. We have worlds for simulating some kind of a sumo challenge. We have worlds for um, simulating uh, something along the line of uh, uh, maybe co-space rescue, where um, you know you have some uh, shapes to pick up from the floor, um, and maybe a timed uh, challenge. We have uh, a maze world where you can select different mazes um, and even create your own. And uh, you know we have an ability to generate worlds from uh, flat images and maybe add a bunch of um, uh, add all kinds of um, uh, items and, and bits into those worlds. So uh, for instance, if you cared about FLL, you know you have the FLL map. Uh, there are no models on top of the map. Um, you'd need to configure those yourselves and, and create them. But at least we have the basics for, um, you know, for, for the lines that you can follow on this map. And a new kind of cool tool that we added was the, uh, the, the ruler recently. And you can use the ruler to maybe um, uh, figure out you know, how far your robot needs to travel um, between two points on this, on this flat map. Um, okay, back to our world selection. I'm now going to put us back to um, line following world. And I will start with the simple curves, but we have a lot of different challenges here going from the easiest at the beginning to the hardest at the end. I'm just going to go for simple curves. Uh, there's a brief description of it. You can tell your robot to start at different places than the default, but for now, let's just start where we start. And close our little ruler tool and we can see that we have um, a tabletop with some line drawn on it. Pretty simple, um, white space, black line, um, not a lot uh, to talk about here. What I can talk about is we have uh, different camera views and uh, the way I'm rotating right now is I'm holding either the left or right button under this camera view. This is the follow camera view. When we use the follow camera view, we're always um, from the perspective of the robot itself. So the robot is always at the center uh, of the viewport. And when we zoom in, we can zoom in directly into our robot and we can look underneath. Um, you can see it's uh, two wheels. The basic robot has two wheels on either side of the uh, front of the robot and ball bearing on the back. And there's uh, in this particular case, there's an electromagnet on the bottom towards the center of the robot. Uh, that's its third actuator that we saw before. So uh, that's one particular camera view. You can also uh, use the top view. Uh, once you're in top view, though, you can immediately you know change the perspective. Just note that now you know the center of the viewport is not necessarily the robot anymore. And there's a further view for you to t uh, test, which is the arc view, and it'll have slightly different uh, limitations and capabilities. Um, in all of these cases, uh, you can test how to zoom, how to rotate, and uh, how to pan. In some cases, you're allowed to pan, and the panning might require different button presses, uh, shift or control together with the other buttons. Or you might be able to um, pan with one button and, uh, sorry, on the top level view, I, I believe, uh, yeah, left button pans and right button uh, uh, rotates, whereas in the arc it might be different and there's no panning in uh, follow mode because you can't pan away from uh, this robot being, the robot being in the center of the viewport. So uh, I just want you to play along with that and try to, you know, try to see underneath the robot, try to see over the robot, try to see uh, from up close, etc. You know, do different things to try to uh, view what you want to see. And uh, at the end, what's the most important thing that I wanted to cover here is that, uh, you know, we can see that the robot is uh, situated right over the line. The line is right at the center and the color sensor, which is at the center in the front of the robot, is pointing directly at the line. And our sensors panel, which my head is blocking a little bit, um, our sensors panel allows you to see uh, the different uh, readings from whatever sensors are currently on top of this robot. 
Uh, the color sensor, which we're going to use for line following, shows us red, green, and blue intensity, but also um, the intensity of the reflective light back into the color sensor itself. So uh, we can see that the color intensity is only 2% uh, because the robot is situated right over the line. Uh, well, the color sensor is situated right over the line. So uh, the color that's reflected back at the color sensor is uh, of low intensity because most of it is absorbed by the black color. We can also see the ultrasonic sensor, which is pointing directly at me right now, uh, but doesn't see me. It sees the, the world and it can see nothing So um, in front of it. And uh, just like in EV3, the, the, the maximum uh, distance that we can get a reading for is 255 centimeters. Our gyro uh, is this sensor here, up here, and as our robot rotates to towards the left or right on this XY axis, um, you will get different readings uh, from this gyro. The GPS sensor, uh, again, maybe not uh, common to EV3 world per se, but uh, common in, you know, uh, the world of robotics automation, having something like a GPS sensor that tells you where you are uh, in the world with respect to some coordinate system. Uh, in our case, you know, we have an XY coordinate system where uh, X is this axis, uh, so we're in the middle of we're in the middle of the X axis at this point, and um, we're uh, further back on the Y axis, which is the length of the table. Uh, the zero is maybe in the middle of the table, so uh, we'll fall off the table when we reach maybe around uh, uh, eight, you know ninety. Uh, or 100 uh, centimeters on the other side. Um, the altitude would be uh, where we are on the z-axis, which um, we can uh, assume is a line perpendicular to the table itself, you know, going up through and, and down through the table. Um, and then we have uh, position and degrees of the left and right motors, so we can um, as, uh, you know, assume the same kind of encoding uh, sense, sensing of, of rotation of these motors that we have in the EV3 motors as well. I'm just going to remove my head for a second so I can show you um, uh, the position uh, uh, in degrees of either the left or right motor at the end um, and those are uh, basically readouts of the encoders that you might have in an EV3 um, larger medium motor um, that show you how how far or uh, the robot had uh, the, the the motor had rotated in either direction. Okay, so those are our sensors in the sensor tab. Of course, if you have different sensors um, set up, then you might see different readings in the sensors tab. Uh, we'll cover that in a different um, challenge. And. Uh, that's about it for um, what we can do um, with the basics of uh, with the basics of and that's about what we can do um, in basic you know from from a basics uh, overview perspective this is what you can do with the gears world um, it's again it's super rich um, I've shown you just uh, a little bit of how to manipulate some of the things, um, uh, some of the basic features, but I haven't really uh, shown you how to customize and extend any of these things. It's an open platform, uh, it's an open source platform, so um, we are constantly improving it and we have uh, partners who are uh, helping us to improve it possibly in the future. And uh, we, we invite you as well to try to uh, help us develop it further. Um, just as a beginning for the next few tutorials, I'll be doing uh, line following uh, using this platform, uh, teaching you the line following algorithms. And um, just as a starting point, uh, I just want you to be able to move your robot around this field. So, uh, you know, we've talked about everything except this play button. And uh, right now the play button doesn't do anything because my blocks haven't been, uh, I haven't created a program to do anything. So uh, let's try to um, do that now. Uh, to move the robot, you have a choice of either moving one uh, motor at a time. So you can uh, run either A or B uh, for, to be able to um, 
move the wheels. You can also, on this robot, run motor C, which would um, start the electromagnet. Uh, there's going to be some uh, wiki area where you can uh, this, uh, find out how to do that and what uh, percentage speeds you know you would need to to get your uh, electromagnet to work. But for our intent um, and purpose, uh, since we are moving a, a simple two-wheel robot, uh, we usually use either a tank or a steering type of block, similar to the EV3. Uh, again, there's a binding from the EV3 dev library to the same types of uh, blocks. Um, in this case, you can control the speed of either left or right wheels. Uh, and in the move steering block, you can control, you know, how far to the left or to the right do you want to be turning, or, or how how straight you want to be going, uh, and at what speed. Um, for line following, I prefer to use the the tank blocks, but um, you know, you, you feel free to choose either or. Um, for now, let's just make our robot go forward. And in this particular case, we're telling our robot to go forward until further notice. So there's no uh, how much to go forward for. You can use the blocks to tell it to go one rotation of each wheel or um, for a particular number of degrees or seconds or milliseconds. But uh, for now, let's just try to get our robot to move forward until further notice. And we can see that it's doing just that. Uh, the program already finished execution and left um, and exited, but since the wheels have never been told to do anything other than continue to moving, um, they're continuing to move and we'll see eventually it'll fall off the edge and plummet. Uh, one of the beautiful things of virtual robotics is that we don't have to worry about parts breaking or losing any Lego pieces that fall off and you know explode into a lot of different places of the room. Uh, so luckily we can just click reset and we have our robot back on our table. Uh, we will be doing something with the line. So as we noted before, the intensity of the sensor uh, is fairly low when we're on the line. But when we're moving forward, we can see that the intensity goes up to 100% when we're all over white and it goes back down when it uh, goes back on the top of the of the line and goes back up to 100, etc. For our first challenge, let's just try to get the robot to stop once it's over the white area. So whenever you see intensity is 100%, stop the robot. I will pause at this point and I will let you test that and I will come back with a solution for that. Um, but uh, feel free to not move on to the next video and do this on your own. You're at gears.aposteriori.com.sg it's the Gears platform brought to you by a posteriori, and we welcome you to this new world of robotics with us.